Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. This morning, and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. I gotta say good morning to my producer, another banger. I don't, I don't think you all do, you all understand. Phil Stubbs, right? Like Phil Stubbs is like the gangster raking scraper of the Bahamas. He gets song for everything, the most important things as well. I hope you all got a space for Phil Stubbs at the 50th Independent Celebrations because. Among all of the artists, he got to be celebrated too. I want to say good morning to Tada, that's to Neil Burroughs, and uh, congratulations on a successful concert this weekend featuring uh, Teddy Val, vividly Val, mm -hmm. and Shad Fur. Uh, a couple of spotters there. Uh, but all in the family, I think all of the people in the spot know all of them people who was on stations to them. And I got to say, uh, listen, they are... Uh, this boy D Mark, this boy D Mark is trying to take over entertainment in the Bahamas. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. You know, we got a lot of stiff competition. It's like you got that boy Bloody, Bloody been holding down Reagan Scrape for about three or four years, you know, mm -hmm. just every weekend performing, uh, making sure there's a space for other artists to perform, which is important, right? Because, you know, Reagan Scrape had sort of kind of falling off. And then ancient man came back and there's a resurgence, right? Mm -hmm. Ancient man, he, he bring a style, old guttural rake and scrape. It was awesome. I mean, it's awesome. Then you had, then you had them three by them from Inagua. Mm -hmm. That dirty Inagua rake. Stalit Avi. Timag, you from Inagua? I don't know why I think you from Inagua. I feel like, I feel like you, from, from you right to Garland, I feel like you from it anyway. These are Nagua boys, them. Mm -hmm. They came in and they, like, they boost that rake and scrape again, you know? And then now you got Bloody, you got Shine, you got um, that boy Johnny Cake, right? You got that boy Johnny Cake. And they are just keeping rake and scrape. And not just them, you got Lishi, um, Lishi LS, and you got uh, Fashon, you got... Our friends there, Wendy and Dyson Knight. Now, Wendy and Dyson Knight, they take in, like, there's a fusion, right? Like, there's a, a global pop fusion as a, 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 a Caribbean or a global north fusion of sound there as well, right? And anyway, they're just keeping it alive. I need you all to know these, but they're making sure that when you party this holiday season, you could party in Bahamian. Mm -hmm. You could do it Bahamian style. They could be all over the place. So look out. I think they're going to be in Cat Island, shine all over the place with Johnny Cake, bloody every weekend, the farm, Kamalami Place. They could be all over the place. Anyway, it's going to be good. I'm going to show you all a while. This is a good time to get your children invested in Bahamian culture. See, when we was young, Gail, we had to go wherever our parents went. Mm -hmm. And we had to listen to whatever they listened to or whatever they let us listen to, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't have this sort of uh, media freedom, this yeah. wide access to everything. Mm -hmm. And so the, a lot of us were privileged, were lucky to be forced into Bahamian culture. Right. And so this is this Christmas is a, it's our first Christmas back, proper, proper. <laughs> it's a great time to get your children 
invested in Bahamian culture. And so hopefully today we have a few moments to play the How Bahamian Are You game show. Happy holidays edition. Well, we find out how Bahamian you is. is. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, and there's only one wrong answer. What's that? I'm my man. <laughs> That's the wrong answer, buddy. <laughs> Miss, he belongs to you now. Yeah. We don't care what you do with him. Right. But you gotta keep him. My lord. Yeah. No, that ain't the wrong answer. Johnny Bread is the wrong answer. So I have a, a question for you to just to start it off. Gift, new gift or re-gift? True Bahamian answer. Re-gift. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. It was given. You see, so I can't take it back to where you got it from. Yeah, and that would be illegal, so don't do that. Right, so, but I, I'm pretty sure I could pass it on. I don't want to throw it away. Throwing away means it's going to waste, so I yeah. don't want it to go to waste. And I don't want it, that means that I could pass it on, you know, re-gift. Somebody else may be able to use it, uh, best case scenario. Or they might throw it away, but at least the burden of pressure is off of me, so re-gift, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. I, um, let me tell you, I don't have anything to be sad about this Christmas. Oh, that's good. I mean, even in the sadness, right? Mm -hmm. Like we can find a way to celebrate. But I have to say to the people who own dogs, <laughs> why are you buying brand new clothes to go put on your dog? You're not a fan? I just said you could spend some of that money on me. Oh. <laughs> and then go to the Salvation Army or the Humane Society thrift store to buy clothes for your dog. Okay, so you could thrift Dog clothes. Did not yeah. know this. All right. I mean, but why are you going to buy? Like, what if I don't need a new pair of shoes? A couple pair of shoes, uh, you know. Brand new is what I said. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be brand new. Where Fido going? <laughs> Junkanoo. Fido going to Junkanoo. Now what? That's something, but Fido, how did you get your tickets? <laughs> Some people were, com they weren't, I mean, they weren't complaining. Okay. They were making a note. Mm -hmm. That they couldn't find no tickets to buy for John Canoe. Right. And I was like, that can't be. Because one thing people in the Bahamas like to do is tell you when they sold out. Mm -hmm. That's true. They don't like to tell you when they only have 10 tickets left, which I think no. some of us would appreciate. Right, no. They, they tell you when they sold out. And nobody said left. that. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to figure out where have all the tickets gone. Mm. Interesting. And where have all the Ross and Square tickets? Now, mind you, I ain't... Spending a whole bunch of money. On Junkanoo. No, to go watch Junkanoo. Right. If I can spend money, I can spend money to rush. Okay, yeah. Like, I for that. I, 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 don't, I can't, uh, in my heart. In your good conscience, spend money. Spend, like, your, spend your Christmas gift money mm -hmm. on a seat in Rawson Square, in Fancy Square, to go watch Junkanoo. Okay. Right? Yeah. But if I had, if I was that type of person... I would be now wondering where all the tickets are. <laughs> if you were uh, curious. Let me tell you something. You all better have a body in every seat. Mm. Because I feel like John Canoe is supposed to start at midnight. And if two o'clock pass and ain't nobody in them seats, buddy, let, um, we should let people sit in them. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Okay. Shouldn't be no empty seat. Definitely. Now, mind you, if you come at 345 and show me your ticket, I'll be a scooch over yeah. and so I can share my snacks with yeah. you. I don't know. That's a polite thing to do. I guess, yeah. But if you have a ticket and you come in 345, uh, you I don't ain't know. serious yeah. about this life. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we got to continue uh, uh, reimagining what Junkanoo could look like in the Bahamas. Yeah, um, trying to create, I shouldn't say create, but uh, create that experience of viewing it mm -hmm. while sticking to the culture of what it is and its origin has been an interesting journey thus far. Yeah. Moving toward that commercialization of it while still keeping the spirit and the fervor of the Chunkadoo itself. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's... Um Again, you got to find balance, right? Because mm -hmm. I tell you what, if you see all the Junkanoo content this year, the Junkanoo is excited. Yeah. They ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They love this. Mm -hmm. This is their thing, right? And, and, and so they are happy in the moment, right? Like what Junkanoo is right now is what they 
love, right? The preparation for the for the rush. And the boy war dog, he got a million more right, coming. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah, <laughs> but then they who are not a part of that experience, but are equally excited about Junkanoo, what it is and what it can become. Mm -hmm. And we gotta find some balance in there. See, tension is good. Mm -hmm. Tension is always good, but we need some balance in there as well. Because um, like you say, what about that old school Junkanoo? Like for the 50th independence, are we gonna have a Junkanoo experience? Like, they should have a whole Junkanoo village with Junkanoo experiences that you could plug into and out of throughout the day mm -hmm. for a week, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to be able to rush old school. Like I want a tent or a station where they make in the costumes like they did in the 1800s, mm -hmm. right? Like when they how they did Historical. it. Historical. Yeah. Costume making. And 19th, uh, 1900s, at mm -hmm. the top of the century, right? Yeah. And how it transitioned. And then the parade itself. How the parade... And so it's a display, but maybe I could be a part of the display, mm -hmm. right? Maybe there are one or two roles that I, the domestic tourists, and them are uh, welcomed the tourists, tourists yeah. could participate in. And, and technically in that order. I hope you all don't mind. Technically in that order. Mm -hmm. That would be awesome. Yeah, the idea has been presented, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, it has kind of been left in the hands of. I'm trying to think of the politically correct way to say it, but mm -hmm. generally yeah. to create this. And then, if a private entity would like to do it, of course, the funding is not available. Yeah. But as you mentioned, it would be nice to have that experience. The best part of Junkanoo is the creative part of it where you are making costumes with your hands. You are intimately involved with costume making or the music that's produced. You're intimately involved with producing the sound. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what makes Junkanoo so personal to every Bahamian that either watches or participates in it. Yeah. And to have access to that experience would be really nice. Yeah. I mean, it, and there's so many, there's so many things like we could do with it. You know, I can't remember, producer, I can't remember what they call it when they, uh, like they in the gate, when they, and the fanfare, when they in the gate, mm -hmm. right? Like you could just have a competition with just that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, for independence, and you got to have the dancers. And anyway, listen, it's plenty to talk about today. I did get excited about <laughs> Junkanoo, but they arrested my boy. My Lord. Where? Mark. And Come, Mark, we got to talk about this. Yeah, where, where you is, Mark? You ain't they looking at... They last time Sammy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sammy get arrested, boy. I am um, reading from today's Guardian. SPF arrested. U.S. expected to formally request extradition. I just want to read this here. Mm -hmm. Uh... I'm going to read, I'm going to start from the beginning of the article. Sam Bankman Fried, the disgraced former CEO of cryptocurrency exchange FTX. Is he really disgraced? Uh, I mean, I don't. Yeah. I noticed posture. that word there too. Yeah. Yeah. Posture. They're trying. Yeah. They are. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to disgrace me <laughs> about doing that. Anyway, you can't. Just, anyway, let's get back to the story. Whose billion dollar company went bust last month was arrested late yesterday announced. Mm -hmm. SPF, this is a quote, SPF's arrest followed receipt of formal notification from the United States that it has filed criminal charges against SBF and is likely to request his extradition, the office of the AG said in a statement. Mm -hmm. As a result of the notification received and the material provided therewith, it was deemed appropriate for the AG to seek SPF's arrest and hold him in custody pursuant to our nation's extradition act. At such a time as a formal request for extradition is made, the Bahamas intends to process it promptly pursuant to Bahamian law and its treaty obligations with the United States. Okay, listen, let's just go on. Will he be outfitted with an ankle bracelet, Aaron? And will he be out on bail by this afternoon? These are the questions that I have. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't expect. Will he be known to police moving forward? I don't expect this boy to see Fox Hill Road. My oh my goodness. I I don't. I I don't think it makes sense mm -hmm. to put him there. Okay. 
I'm not saying that it makes sense to put it. See, it don't make sense to put anybody there. Right. That is a substandard, uh, inhumane facility mm -hmm. due to the dereliction and its upkeep and the fact that it was uh, obsolete mm -hmm. decades ago. Decades uh, ago, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody should go there. Generally speaking. Please do not risk any of my tax dollars by sending this by there. <laughs> In fact, what I would like to know is this. The U.S. filed criminal charges against SBF and is likely to request his extradition. Right. It hasn't been requested as yet, but they're making preparation just in case. Of the notification received, we decided to lock him up. Listen, I... That... I just want you to know that I would find I would sue you. I, you no actual extradition, formal extradition request, right? Like the process hasn't been completed. Mm -hmm. You haven't done the official thing yet. Right. But you already locked this guy up. Okay. Couldn't you have just detained him like for 48 hours? How you do, my boy? Because you say that was a matter of national security. Right. And then when you extended it to 72, you were like, listen, this is legal and I could do it. And why we did, did, is that what we did? You put him on a 48? Um, questions that need answers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if he sues. Who? Not me, because he can't sue me. Oh, okay. That's what I said. <laughs> if he sues, I need you all to know that it wasn't me. I wasn't here. Mm -hmm. I had nothing to do with it. And but I didn't authorize it. It would be interesting to see if him being in, for example, the prison, no names called, mm -hmm. would be better than extradition. Is that possible? Uh, Th sorry, likely alleged, likely extradition. No? But the better for whom is the question. For Sam. <laughs> oh, Sam. Oh, Sam. <laughs> How you get yourself here, Sam? I don't know. Because Sam seemed to be eager, uh, willing and eager, to go and testify before uh, Maxine Waters' committee. Okay. I just want to say to anybody who I had been talking to about this, you all notice Maxine has not subpoenaed him yet. Mm -hmm. She's going to. Likely? No. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. But that's another kettle of fish. Yeah. And I don't have enough data to talk about that. So the saga continues with... His arrest. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we sit, we await for a formal request for extradition. I just want to say to the Bahamas government, don't pack this boy up and just put him on the flight and send him. Hmm. Like, wait for the formal extradition request. Extradition request, I think. Um, I don't think it would be just speculating, of course, in the government's best interest for him to be extradited given what he may or may not know. Again, allegedly, I don't know what he may or may not know, but... Yeah. Yeah. Well, when people had questioned, uh, why hasn't he been arrested yet? Why hasn't he been arrested yet? And I say, well, first of all, if you're certain he's not going anywhere, why, why arrest him? Mm-hmm. Right? If he's not, you mean a flight risk or... Well, I say that. I, oh. What That's what I mean. Okay. <laughs> if he say he ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Why move to arrest him, to, like, to extradite him? Right. To, I think gathering as much information as possible, mm -hmm. right? We need to know as much as we can, mm -hmm. especially given the allegations, right? One of the main ones is that uh, the business was not run according to globally accepted standards. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, like the uh, internal communications documentation of uh, corporate decisions, things like that. It's mm -hmm. very loose. I think another story was that the liquidators do not have access to um, some information that they need, and it may have disappeared as well. Well, I think what it was is that there's a, uh, somehow there is a timeline on your ability to access Certain, so, certain, data. certain data. Okay. And uh, they are not being given access to it, and they need access to it before it disappears. Mm -hmm. What troubles me, right, is this sort of global north positioning mm -hmm. of themselves as the rulers of the world. Right. Yeah. Right? Uh, 
earlier in the month, European Union officials were saying things like, oh, you know, if cryptocurrency world, we're going to have to figure out how to regulate cryptocurrency and the countries that host cryptocurrency businesses. And I'm just like, say, say, say what now? Yeah. And the introduction, I believe, of like a crypto blacklist. Yeah. In some way, again. And, and so I say to myself, how could you imagine yourself the leader of the free crypto world when you have already been like publicly acknowledged as the largest washers of money <laughs> in the mm -hmm. world. Like how, what type of audacity mm -hmm. does it take, right? For we already know, like London, we do, you all is like Mary Poppins and chimney sweeps and the washerwomen, yes. you, right? How mm -hmm. could you then turn around and suggest to us ground for this type of thing. Yeah, like, if we're going to get into this, then you're going to have to regulate us as well. Mm -hmm. How about you start regulating start at home? yourself? Hmm. Right? I think that will work. And it's the same question when we look at the financial services industry, right? Like, we are being constantly called on to tighten up. Tighten up the ship because European countries are concerned that jurisdictions like ours are allowing their European citizens to hide money from their European government. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just say, like, but... But that's yours. That Remember that uh, PSA? Which one? I learned it from watching you, Daddy. Mm -hmm. I learned it from watching you. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's where you get it from. Yeah, but I think I, I... I mean, I was about to say I tell a lie, right? But that's, that's it. Like the history of, of wrecking in the Bahamas, and that's a European history, mm -hmm. you know? Somehow. It's their idea. We just easily and commonly accept this belief that black people are inherently criminal mm -hmm. and bad. Yeah, I think, um, I think as long as the wrong people benefit from it, yeah. Right, then it becomes, oh, we need to regulate, we need to watch. Up yeah. until that point, so be it type of feeling. But if Bahamians, for example, were to benefit, then yeah. I'm pretty sure things changed rapidly after that. Yeah. So I, I, I have a model. Like I, um, I think this may be a good way to talk, like to explain FTX and its presence in the Bahamas mm -hmm. to people, right? I say like FTX, the exchange is like a casino. We host casinos. Yep. Casino, you want to come to the Bahamas and operate your casino in the Bahamas? Welcome. Mm -hmm. We are a jurisdiction that will provide a location. We'll even provide amenities for your casino guests like hotels where they could sleep, mm -hmm. restaurants where they could eat. We even, I can put, a, put together a beach right there. I can put together a beach right there so they go swim. That's what we do. For a small fee. Right. And we will even provide a regulatory regime, if you want, mm -hmm. to govern your presence here. You right. know, what, what you always do. Because the people who gamble, they may get upset and say, oh, I don't know how I lose all my money. Mm -hmm. Right? So... FTX is like a casino. We are the jurisdiction that hosts casinos and we provide a regulatory framework for casinos. I don't have to gamble to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't have to go inside the casino to do that. In fact, I would say to Bahamians, did you all miss the play entirely? Maybe you ain't supposed to gamble in that casino. That's not how we make our money right. yeah. from the casino. We make our money by providing, the well, eventually providing more than 10% of the beds. Mm -hmm. we, by providing the beds and the food that they eat mm -hmm. and the services, like the, the massage labor, service yeah. to rub up their fingers because they done. <laughs> spend all that money. Right. Mm -hmm. That's how we make our money. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you know, we say maybe we have a rule. We have a rule that says, listen, when you come to the Bahamas, right, you can't spend a uh, hundred casino. I need you to keep 10% in your pocket because you're going to need to tip me on the way out. Right. Or because there are other things for you to do when you get tired of being in the casino. You got to catch yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to walk away from the table, 
right? You may want to get on with a little four wheeler and go do wheelies in the day on the beach or something. Yeah, or a little jet ski or right. Right. That's how we make our money mm -hmm. from the casino, not by actually gambling in the casino, because we remember casinos. They the house, and mm -hmm. they take they win. First of all, they all, they like your. Let me rephrase that. The casino is like your Grammy. They always win, right? So that's the first rule. The second rule is they take the majority of what they make out the country. So we don't gamble in the casinos. Mm -hmm. We make our money from the presence by hosting them and prov providing things for them and things for them to do when they're not in the casino. Mm -hmm. And I thought everybody knew that when FTX came to town. Everybody did not know that. No. Apparently. Right. Okay. See, you could be risky now. You don't have to be like me. You could be risky. You say, look here, I go in in that casino. Mm -hmm. But the key to any good casino run is to know when to get in and when to get, out. and when to get out. Now, see, nobody has done anything wrong here yet. Nothing. No illegality. Nothing. Ain't nobody teeth your money. Ain't nobody put a sign up that say, Holy Church of the Tobacco Knuckle of Mothers, and you walk in and then discover it was a casino. None of that happened, right? There's nothing. It, you wanted to go to a casino, and you say, Oh, look at this casino. Mm -hmm. I can go into the casino. You wanted to gamble. Yeah. Okay. And some of you lost. And, so, and then there are those of us on the outside that never put any money in but continue to make money just from the presence of the casino in the country. Okay. And I hope that's a good explainer or descriptor for people yeah, hope, yeah. to figure out like what's happening with FTX. Now, that's my, the extent of my engagement mm -hmm. with FTX. I saw the casino sign. I said, oh, I ain't going in there. <laughs> I don't like that. And some people went in. Some people said, hey, look here, let me put this business right next to your business. Did you see the um, Did you see the video of the people from the U.S. Embassy walking into the courtroom as yeah? No. I, most Most noted was the the large pothole outside of the courtroom that just came into view and just seemed to increase in size as the camera moved back as they watched the people walk inside. I like it. That's yeah. a That's a good optic. <laughs> ain't no F, obviously ain't no FTX money been there to fix that pothole. I like it. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. That's a good look here. There's good optics. Mm -hmm. I for that. That was a good example. And I appreciate it now, Ministry of Works. Yesterday I talked about the Ministry of Works. Mm -hmm. The overall play. Mm -hmm. These foreign people can't think we're rich. Okay. That changes the dynamic altogether. You can't walk inside. I appreciate. I appreciate that. Um, talking about courthouses. Uh, who stole the Christmas tree? Oh, Gail, <laughs> more importantly, who thief all the gifts I had hidden under, under the Christmas tree. tree from my family? Oh, man. Dear That's Mitchell, tough. dear Mitchell and Hasty family, I need you all to understand that I wake in now mm -hmm. and I've been saving. Gainfully employed. I may even made some FTX money. <laughs> from looking at the casino. And I buy plenty gifts this year. Mm -hmm. And I say I'm going to hide them from you all because you're all smart. On Bay Street. I, under, the Christmas, under the national Christmas tree. I figured that would be the best place to hide the tree, mm -hmm. um, the gifts. Mm -hmm. And then when I go on to go check on my gifts, the tree is gone. I just need to know, dear Bahamas, uh, the numbers to call are 323-6232, The text line is 422-GR96. Who teeth the tree and where you think my gifts are? And where you think you're going to put it? Yeah. <laughs> And their text who texted yesterday and tell the people I snitching because I uh, commit traffic offenses in your company vehicle where you could be clearly identified. That's not snitching. That's helping people out. It's called a Christmas gift. Um, I, I'm also not snitching, but somebody please call me and tell me where, where is the tree? I invested a lot of money this year and the thing gone. Just like where? You know what, Bishop? Singing pastor. No, no, no. What's the second, what's the second voice of that song? I bet the second voice is the tree gone. You think so? Yeah. I don't blame him either way. But look here, that's the producer telling us it's time to go to a break. You guys stay tuned to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. We will be right back.
On the night of Christmas Eve, we went to Grand Market, walking the street, dressed in my blue cream, feeling and high heel, greeting everyone that we meet, buying toys from the side of the street, then ride merry go round and blow with pee pee. It's Christmas, it's Christmas time again. how important collecting your money can be to the success of your business. Start your relationship with Fidelity today so that we can show you the many options available to you with our merchant services. From ClickLine to merchant terminals and e-commerce options, we're here to help your business succeed. For more details, speak to one of our business development officers at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-6676 in Freeport. Visit our website at fidelitygroup.com or visit any of our branches. Love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. This is Dwight Strawn with Morning Blend. On behalf of the crew and my co-hosts, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and an incredibly blessed and prosperous New Year. Welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Let me get to these texts quickly. Uh, text here, Aaron, we the Bahamas and other countries had better be careful with the law on FTX. Otherwise, he will sue the Bahamas for his $3 billion, and that will be his very own. <clears throat> See, that's what I'm saying. Don't even speak it. Text it, don't put it out there. But, yeah, we have to be very careful. We have to make sure that we dot every I and cross every T. This is what we've been practicing for, people. In fact, that's it. This is what we have been practicing for. Mm -hmm. This is the big moment. This is where we have to do everything correctly. And I hope that that's the direction we're heading in. Texas says, great show as usual. There are three wrong answers. Can guava duff and raisins and coal? Can guava duff? Raisins and coleslaw and Dexter. Oh. You uh, stick a pin because I have to f ask this question and I have to get back to this question is how did they move the Christmas tree? Okay, so back to the <laughs> game show. Raisins Do you mean and, raisins and what? Coleslaw. Okay. Now, first of all, we know that raisins were added to the coleslaw to bring sweetness to it. Oh, really? Because sugar on, was on ration. I'm sure that's what the answer is, right? Okay. But not just that. It's like uh, I imagine that you put raisins in a coleslaw that has vinegar, right? Like it can't wake. Mm -hmm. I like how you're trying to make this happen. Like you. Are oh no, really... I'm not trying to make it happen. Oh, okay, okay. I I was saying you you really. I just bring. I make my own coleslaw. Heavy lifting with the the people, raisins should listen, never be in the coleslaw. That's people just... is tote from the party. So I told food to the party. Okay. Yeah, some of y'all can't. <laughs> can't prepare food. No, and I in that category. The people, some people looking at me right now, laughing their head off, say, "You know, Aaron Green can't make a, a pot of peas and grits." Not very well is what I'm saying. But, but I it's practice. edible, right? Yeah, okay. I, I have to eat it because that's my money. 
the mayonnaise in the uh, Kong salad, I yeah. think that is, what do you call it, geographical? Yeah. I think, Graham, is it Graham Bahamas? Yeah, Northern Bahamas. Okay. But I, I, I liken this idea, right? Because I realize I don't like all crawfish salad. And okay. if you don't mince, if you don't pull apart that crawfish properly, mm -hmm. and I realize that that crawfish salad and that conch salad with mayo in it could taste very similar mm -hmm. if made the right ways, yeah, you know? Yeah, same. I guess generally same concept, just, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I just want to know what them Bahamians, like it's two set of Bahamians in Florida. Okay. It's yeah. the, we made in pineapple Bahamians, mm -hmm. and we put tomato juice in the <laughs> conch salad. Bahamians. Bahamians who have been gone a short period of time, and Bahamians who have gone a little while. Yeah. yeah, but I think we're going to call the tomato um, juice, we're going to call that the uh, Bloody Mary conch salad. It's like a hair of the dog. You drink Bloody Mary as a hangover remedy, mm -hmm. and that's like the hair of the dog uh, conch salad. I can't support tomato juice and conch salad. I am so sorry. I, I got you. I can't do it. All right. Says him, raisins and coleslaw, that's one way to get condemned. <laughs> <laughs> to never return from agreed. Dante's Inferno. Yes, agreed. Okay. What's another uh, Bahamian? Are you oh, ready God. for this? Yes. Junkanoo parade or Junkanoo practice? Ooh. Man. I don't know. You, you're talking about two different vibes you know what i mean like the junkano practice is it's more organic it's more you in the moment and you could spectate up close and personal and see mm -hmm. what's going on but the junkano parade itself is such a spectacular show it's something that you want to see as well i don't know that's a tough one i think i i i, I as a spectator mm -hmm. junkano practice okay yeah right mm -hmm. I think to to be on bay and to not be Russian, I get it. I I I just a scrapper. Mm -hmm. I's a scrapper from a scrap group, mm -hmm. not a scrappy group now. I's a <laughs> scrapper from a scrap group, but I get it. Mm -hmm. To be on bay and to not be able to go on the road and shake a cowbell is a problem. Okay, yeah. I I I am surprised that more we don't have more outbursts of people. Like I just. Especially if I was a drinker. Mm -hmm. I go in on Bay Street, I'd be in the crowd and taking some cowbell from some by them and joining in. They are tourists. Don't do that. Don't, yeah. don't do that, tourists. Please don't do that. That's a wild dream that I'm having. Because these junkanoos take it very seriously. Yeah. They, they count in the points for the win. That would be fun if we, had in, if we incorporate that into this year's parade. Mm -hmm. Or next year's parade for the 50th Independence. But yeah, you could just... I, I mm -hmm. think more of that should be encouraged, generally speaking. Yeah. Um, not for me, though, because I need to sit down. But, you know, if anybody else wants to join in a parade, then by all means, something should be made available for them to do that. This text is for you. Uh-oh. I do not make my coleslaw without raisin oh. and diced up tomatoes with lemon, onion, and a dash of salt. Okay. My thoughts and prayers to the texter. Yeah, text her. I don't, I don't know who she for. <laughs> I mean, she's a Hannah, but I don't know. And then another text says, none. I watch from my bed. I like dance, junk, and new music at parties during Christmas. Yes. See, that's the next yeah. one I forget to add. Because the junk have taken junk from practice and from Bay Street. Mm -hmm. And have given us another way to, to experience. Enjoy it. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is now I'm a little upset. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this one, right? It's like if you have enough money, you can get a junk new group come play at your house. You have junk new in your house. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you're well enough connected to a junk newer, like I don't have to have money. My uncle is a junk newer. And I tell my uncle, he was my favorite uncle and I was your favorite niece. And I need about three or four by them to come to my party in junk new, mm -hmm. which is a greater privilege than money. Yes. You know? Yeah. Um, have people who love Junkanoo enough to the point where they would gladly engage and do that because the spirit of Junkanoo. Yeah. Okay. Guava uh, duff or bread pudding? Guava duff. Why? Both oh, man. got rum sauce. And I think that is 
why this is a tough one. <laughs> bueno on both sides. Both got rum sauce. Yeah. As a little children, you got to love that. Mm -hmm. And also, as an adult, don't think I didn't notice. Some of y'all adults is give your children the rummy sauce so they go to sleep. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. I understand it. I, don't, I, I mean, and I, then I loved it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it's a good thing. Yeah. The guava duff is so versatile. You know what I mean? Like, I've seen some people do things more recently that have been very interesting. Like what? Tell me. Well, they have the little... Um, the, the steam dumpling? No, the guava. Yeah, it's the almost nuda? like a little... Right, yeah. Like a little I like cupcake you. or muffin type of Your, thing. She's nice. It's a they put other things in it. It's the guava duff concept, but it's different fruit. Like yeah, it's um, it's the steamed guava steamed dumpling, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Bring me nice. But you could do. But you know they've been doing that with it. regular duff too, right? Yeah, of course. They say they got coconut duff. Right. I'm gonna tell you all the know. secret. My my grand aunt she made she makes a solid guava duff, and you know once uh, once you get that, that's it. Don't fight me, because it's not me. Okay. Did you know these people out there making raisin duff? I don't, um, I don't no, know. We, we keep making progress and then it's just, we stray it, further. <laughs> away further from God. From God's light. Like, why? Why would you do that? I mean, I, I understand it from a, you trying to make something to eat point of view. But I can tell you like why. You because down on your it's luck. little children who made the first raisin duff. Oh. Like, they was home. Oh. They had access to the flour, whether oh. they had permission oh. or not. And they wanted to make something yummy to eat. Right. They're gonna get killed if they eat if they use Grammy the guava. guava. So they put the raisins. Right. That's why I wanted to ask. Uh, somebody had texted and said, "Raisin duff? That's mm -mm. uh, can guava duff." Right. And what I wanted to know is, texter, is somebody out here selling a complete guava duff in a can? Because you know people are, are selling chicken in a can. Like, did you know you could buy a whole cooked chicken in a can? No. And you could buy a whole loaf of bread in a can. Not in the Bahamas, but in the world. Okay. Anyway. No. But the, I think they mean using the canned guavas, perhaps. Ah, versus. In the guava duff versus the uh, fresh fruit. That's okay. Hopefully that's what they mean. There's somebody, think about it, guava duff in a can. Yeah. And imagine if you could do it like uh, the cinnamon rolls, mm -hmm. where you have the sauce at the top of the container. And Warm then it up and that would can. be nice. Mm -hmm. That'd be very nice. What's your favorite form of guava duff? Um, or, or traditional, yeah. Traditional, traditional steam duff, in yeah. a pillowcase? Mm -hmm. I love that very much. I think the cultural aspect of that is most like appealing, I guess, because how do we think of that? You know what I mean? And then people are still doing it that way. Mm -hmm. And, and who was the first person to get beaten for taking Grammy good pillowcase to, to boil use duff? To make <laughs> We need a, in fact, we need a documentary. Mm -hmm. um, and another point, I think that uh, whoever's responsible for the 50th independence should figure out how we're going to honor them people on the Western Road that made uh, guava cake. Okay. I mean, the old Traveler's Rest, Traveler's Rest mm -hmm. restaurant guava cake. Mm -hmm. They deserve to be recognized for the 50th independence. Okay. That recipe is so good. Somehow, I don't want vegetables in my cake. <laughs> I think it's a trick. Carrot cake is good, but go on. Um, but it's like a carrot cake, but good. <laughs> With guava. I, and good. Okay. Yeah. All right. That, and, and so it was always traditional guava duff. I'm not sure how I feel about the steamed dumpling yet. Okay. Steamed duff yet. But that cake. That's worth, worth having again. Yeah, the government should teeth, like acquire it. I was about to say teeth. <laughs> acquire it and compensate them for the recipe like you acquire land. Well, at least we would have one consistent recipe across the board. That seems to be another part of our problem. Everybody has a different way of doing these various things. Mm -hmm. And um, nobody thinks that anybody else's way is the correct way to do it. So if we have, you know, an official uh, recipe for that, then it may make things go a bit smoother when uh, other people try to make it. Yeah. Possibly. Oh, well. Dear Independence Committee, we need a national... Recipe book? Yes. Mm -hmm. Tracing back from the earliest traditional recipe lineage, right? 
like have have the newer versions and the variations and and more importantly the gift that you have is the archipelago mm -hmm. right and each island's variation yeah. and then when you get to the island and you realize within each island is a variation for each settlement the mm -hmm. same way the accent changes dialect uh, changes the recipes change as well mm -hmm. and 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 those things need to be documented we got a call on the line uh good morning caller and uh, welcome to on the clock especially if you are a baker with 20 Hello. years of experience making guava duff how are Hello. you good morning good morning Mr. oh Mr. yes i know you could make guava duff sparky hello i say good morning i know you could make guava duff <laughs> i see that laugh that's a boy who could make guava duff <laughs> i have a thought at a very young age by my mother, God bless the dead. She died when I was 15. By that time, I used to cook food for the family. Mm -hmm. So I learned how to cook very early from my grandmother and my mother. So I want to say, is that the independence committee there with you? No, I mean, should be. Oh. We both should be on the independence committee, but you don't but, watch um, it. I don't know where these committees have come from anyway, but you know, somebody, you know, somebody calls an or something like that. But, you, you know, um, what I would really like to see, and I've always been talking about this, that I don't mean to be disrespectful to no particular class of people or anything, mm -hmm. but I would like to see when we have our independent celebrations next year, mm -hmm. our Bahamian people. When I look on the world every year, I look around. The only white, I like to use color, the only white, people I see when I be up in the stars are mostly invited dignitaries and tourists who come who be in town at that time. Mm -hmm. Majority of our white Bahamians and our Indian people are talking about Indians from the East. Yeah. Not the Indians from America. From Mosby, yeah. The Indians from who who we go here. Yeah. The Chinese. I would like to see all of those that have something called a a, a residential permit or a Bahamian uh, white certificate or a Bahamian status yeah. to be on the Western for all of us. And you know when people had to say this. One time ago, we used to celebrate the Bahamas, Chocolo. White people used to be on Bay Street and black people. Look now, here. basically, tourists and black people, because our black people, most of them, we carry on so far that we got public. The scared of white people will come in around here because they still are fighting to break out any moment. And they don't want me up in that. I got hit one time on my show with a, with a, with a, with a, with a, with a bear bottle. Something came on the crowd one day mm -hmm. and dropped right on my shoulder on Main Street right by Watson Square. Mm -hmm. And I out there junking and having fun. Somebody threw a bottle up in the air and it landed on my shoulder. If only somebody would drop a husband that on your shoulder like people that. from being around you. Yeah. So I wish the Bahamian people would get together and a, if only for one day. Mm -hmm. Stop the crime and the foolishness, and let's celebrate it. And, and tell our white brothers from Abaco, Spanish love, Inucha, and them Long Island people who believe they're the whitest Bahamians in the world, to let's celebrate as Bahamians for one day. Thank you, Sparky. I would love to see that happen. One day. Thank you, Sparky. I like Sparky. Sparky spark ideas because, dear Independent Secretariat, you got to partner with the university, whatever, the is, and the archives. Mm -hmm. The university, the archives, and the School of Public and Oral History at the University of the Bahamas. We got to have every sort of ethnic group in the country. We got to trace their lineage, in the, right, their presence in the Bahamas from the beginning to the present, right? Mm -hmm. A part of it, Sparky, is not the community themselves' faults, right? Like, we're not going to say, that, oh, these people are just closed off and don't want to come out. It's about curating a space, right? And, and this is going to be the most, I think this is going to be the, one of the most important things for the independent secretariat. How do you create, curate, create and curate, right? So you create it and then you design it, put it together, mm -hmm. manage it, maintain it. How do you curate a space that welcomes that invites, that draws, that evokes these various groups to come out? Mm -hmm. How do you center multiple groups, categories of people? How do you center multiple of them at the same time? 
So they trust it's a safe space and that all the stories could sit next to each other. Even when there's a little tension and discomfort, they could sit next to each other with balance. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the biggest task for this independent secretariat because this is the national vibe. Boy, producer, I almost forget I had a time clock. Thank you for playing that music. So let me just let me just sort of wrap it up, right? Right. You have to not just encourage, you have to trick the Bahamian people into coming out. It's not just for them, but that it cannot happen without them. That every group is important and has to be here. That you need them so you could do your job. Not the other way around. Right? You've got to create a space that welcomes all of us. Anyway, we got to go. Gail, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Aaron. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Why Sam? My boy Sam. You guys have a great day. Cecil Nury and Guardian Radio AM is up next. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas.